Welcome back to Lupin the Third Anime Review Episode Number Five. This will be episodes 13 and 16, and with this one, there are seven more episodes left to go for part one. The first episode is basically well, here's kind of thing with this one. It's called Okay, it's called Beware the Time Machine. Yes. Where it's like Oh, this basically has all four of the main, four of the five main characters. The inspector is not in this episode, which is shocking to say the least. But he does spend the following three, and he's gotten really insane. Yes. So this one is simply, oh, this time travel wants to kill Lupin because uh, apparently his descendant to kill the other guy's clan. Yeah, and the guy doing this is really insane. Called the Momo Clan. And apparently he, and of course they have Lupin just stealing a statue that disappears. And of course, and of course he later on has it where this guy also has a freaking castle disappear. Yes, a castle in the middle of the desert. Now, why in the world they decided to have this basically castle disappear? Oh, Momo just try, try and try back in time to kill the guy who basically built him thing. Which, that makes no freaking sense. Would you kill him before the thing was built? Or destroy the blueprints. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, it just seems as though this one just seems like so out there, and tip and not a typical Lupin episode. Just oh, of course, it's a joke. Oh yeah, I don't have a Lupin the fourth. Yeah, I thought that was kind of hilarious because given the fact there technically is Lupin the fourth, Runjiko mine Lupin the fourth from Are the Scarred Ammo. Yeah. No, that's not a nod to that because this came out roughly 40 years before that anime did. So, yeah. Give it that what you will when it comes to that one. It just feels like this one, it's like, oh, it's it just not a good episode. It just, oh yeah, the hilarious bit at the end where his time machine is destroyed by the guys. Just slice in half. Also, Vegeta's briefly. Vegeta, there's practically nothing this whole episode. It'd be a damsel in distress. At one point, you have Lupin and Vegeta actually have the first of uh, Flyred many attempts to get married. Yes, first of many. Yeah, and the episode ends where you look like he is about to marry again. Of course, he runs away. Yep. Now, they're 14. Oh, boy. This is a, this is a really dumb one. Okay. Now, this is actually the first episode where not only Gaumon does not appear, which, okay, fine. But Jigen does not appear. As far as I can tell, there's no explained reason. Maybe I missed it, basically. I was skipping around this episode because we have where these, we have where Fajiko and Lupin want to get their hands on this, on this, on this emerald. Okay. So they think it's on Catherine, the woman who is basically there. And with her, her, basically her, 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 her new husband, who... He is a weakling, like, wow, this smoking hot babe married this guy who's some my guys see just a nerd. Yeah, because they're a lucky guy to marry a beautiful woman like Catherine. Yep, and apparently the wedding party is so boring. So Lupin decides to hide in the wedding cake, and Fanjiko disguises herself as the maid. Yes, seriously. And Zendigas is there, of course, he's looking for Lupin the whole time. And Lupin's there, except he's inside the cake. <laughs> We're, like, examine the cake. Take a freaking knife, stab the freaking cake, which I thought was funny. And, of course, Lupin's perfectly fine. And, of course, you have him actually take the thing. And, like, first, like, oh, just reach this device to grab it. Drop the luck up. He's able to stick his hand right out of the freaking cake. And just basically have him take the damn thing. And, of course, for Jigami Simulator, like, Oh, that's a fake. I got the real one. And then that breaks and turns out that's a fake one too. Where is the real one, might ask? Well, we spent 15 minutes looking at the damn thing. Look all over the damn ship. And, of course, Zagasa is like, what the heck is going on here? And it turns out the real emerald is in, is, is basically his eye for a cat. Which, thankfully, they didn't show them removing the eye of a cat on screen. Because they showed the cat later where it has an eye patch. I thought that was kind of weird. So, of course, Vector's like, he took the damn world. We've been searching for Lupin all the freaking time that he took the damn world already. Nope, he just took him just now. And then you have Lupin and Virginia just right off in one of Lupin's gadgets. And one of those rare times, Lupin actually gets away with a damn thing. 
yeah, it was kind of weird this one. So, in the case of our next episode, Zinagasa basically is invited to a police conference in Europe. But first, he has to catch Lupin. So, they kind of have him taken on board. Of course, the whole trap thing, like, like the whole thing about stealing a statue, a gold, like, this thing worth, like, $300 million. And then, of course, you have the, the crazy ideas happen. This thing, like, damaging a gate that's worth $10 million. He's like, Lup- he, of course, the guy's like, I don't care about a freaking gate. He always like, I do. I paid $10 million for the damn thing. <laughs> $10 million. Wow. So silly. And it's almost like these episodes have not become that interesting. And by the way, he, he twice Lupin gets captured in this episode. First, basically in disguise. Just so he could plan basically a lockpick thing in his own jail cell. Just by sheer coincidence, he's in the same exact jail cell after he was arrested by, of course, Zenigasa. So he go off to Europe. Then, of course, the gang steals thing anyways. Excuse me, of course, they fly away, and he, of course, flies away. Of course, he gets freaking out to it. Like, he really wants to get off the plane because Lupin is still out in the open. And he gets, he traps himself inside the bathroom. The next episode is no explanation. Like, did he go to the police conference? Don't know. Next episode, it simply starts off with Jigen and Lupin trying to steal some diamond. Like, oh yeah, trying to steal some diamonds. And I'm like, now here's the thing. This is something Lupin would definitely steal jewelry because he's a jewel thief. So he does make it because there's there too many people. So then basically Fujiko is mad at him. Nearly wrecks their car that they're in. So he says, okay, fine. We'll go steal it. So disguise himself basically as sanitation workers. Where they proceed to take the owner, who apparently is head of a criminal syndicate called the Beaver Gang. Who... He puts him as one of his employees in sticky glue. And then, of course, Lupin proceeds to use a vacuum cleaner. Yes, a vacuum cleaner to vacuum all the jewels. And there are three saves in the back. Smash all the display case, take all those jewels. And then, of course, they ride away. And then, of course, they take a little, they take the same car. And, of course, the guy's chasing them over the city. Of course, they trap him in this little area. I mean, the way this city looks, it looks like it's Japan. Yeah, they're pretty much in Japan this episode. They don't say where they are a lot of the time when they have these episodes. Sometimes it could be Italy, it could be Europe, who knows. But this one looks like it's freaking Japan. It could be France, for all I know. Yeah, so, and of course they drive out of the course, they all of a sudden, fly tires get flat. And of course, towed by a tow truck. And the tow truck driver just had me, but Jiko takes the jewels. And then, of course, they steal them back by. Of course, they find out that, and of course, they have this funny bit where you have. The guy said he's pacing around his office and he had to leave the beaver cage and he's like, they both say, damn that Lupin, damn that Lupin. And Lupin does the same thing in his own study and says, damn that Fajiko. <laughs> okay. This I thought was quite hilarious and good on the anime for doing this. It's so hilarious. So they find out he's taking a, a small red plane. A one seater, mind you. I've never seen a plane like this where this freaking tiny. So, she flies up, and she's about to sip some coffee. And then she's shot down by the freaking Beaver Gang, who apparently got their own fighter jet. Which I'm like, okay, where the heck they get this damn thing? Yeah, and of course, and of course the only reason why they knew about this is because Lopon called them. They didn't say who the pilot was, but they didn't say where the jewels are. So, and of course, they chase into a cabin, which they... Look at the jewels. Ooh, nice shiny jewels. And of course they free her. And of course they shoot her. They shoot a parachute the guy out of the tree. And then she hides on a thing. And by the way, do, do they in this episode, do they get the jewels? Do they keep the jewels at the very end? No, they have losing them. Yes, they lose them. And of course they fly away. And of course Lupin and Dujugan had to basically just get rid of their clothing. And Fajiko gives the a chance to keep her clothing. Just for weight. And they fly away. But before they, while they're flying away, Lupo discovers a diamond in Fanchico's hair. And he's like, I don't need this. And he flies off. And that's that. Yeah, quite an oddball of an episode. Yes. It just seems as though for these ones, it's not as good as the other ones. That just seems like anyways when it comes to this one. Now, with episode 15, like 16, there's only seven episodes left. My guess is with the next couple of videos, I'll probably wrap up the series. Yep, 
so yeah, that's it for Tip of View. Stay tuned for later on for more episodes to review. Uh, probably discuss basically the rest of it there, okay? Next video. Bye.